Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of the CGCB podcast. Um, today I'm recording alone. Uh, a few days ago, John went out and he had filmed his project mini truck. Um, he showed that to you guys and has plans for it and what parts he's using. And today I wanted to give you all an update on one of my projects. And it is this heavy bastard right here. So... Today's topic is obviously going to be the second letter in the uh, CGCB, which would be guns. Um, and I wanted to talk to you all about my precision rifle that I've been working on for the past six or seven months. Um, the reason I built this, um, to preface this whole thing, is a friend of mine that I used to work with, uh, Jack, um, started a company or him and his friend started a company called Quantified Performance, which is specifically for competitions with, for long range precision rifle competitions with gas guns. Doesn't matter whether it's an AR platform, AK, um, or any other variant like a uh, Galila A, SCAR, whatever. Um, that's their focus. And so I built this rifles for one of their divisions, uh, which is known as Practical Precision, which um, practical precision is laid out as a 20 inch barrel um, from muzzle to bolt face, um, any magnification optic, and 20 round magazines. Uh, they have a couple other divisions like your general purpose, which is 18 inches and shorter with a low power variable. Um, and they also have open, which is unlimited barrel length, unlimited magazine capacity, any optic. Um, but I chose the practical precision because um, I used to shoot a 20 inch 5.56 similar to this but a little bit different in um, 600, 600 yard F class which is basically bipod up front and bag in the rear, uh, 600 yard bullseye shooting um, and it's pretty difficult with a gas gun when everybody's running a purpose built uh, bolt gun in hotter calibers like your six millimeters or six fives. Every once in a while you'll see a 30 caliber um, like a 308 um, in the tactical rifle division or the uh, like very rarely like a 300 magnum. Uh, most people were shooting uh, like your six five Creedmoors, your six Creedmoors, six BRs, um, things like that. Well, back to this rifle. So the parameters I started with were for the practical position, so 20 inch barrel, any optic, um, 20 round magazines, which is what I have in here. Um, so just to give you all a basic overview, I'm going to go um, muzzle to butt and give you all a basic rundown of this particular rifle. Um, so starting up front, we've got a, just, this is just a basic um, birdcage flash hider, and I'm using that um, while we work on our um, muzzle brakes for Lasser Precision, which are currently um, waiting, which we're currently waiting on. They're get, they've been sent to the machine shop, the quote's been approved. Um, so we should be getting those hopefully by the end of the next month. Um, then there, this is a 20 inch 5.56, one and eight twist barrel. Um, it's a heavy barrel contour. Um, I picked this up at the AK guy, AR yard sale. Um, he had a bunch of them there. These were the last one. That's one of the last ones that he had left. Um, it shoots really well. I don't have the target next to me to show you, but this thing will put 10 shots of 77 grain um, IMI razor, razor core uh, within a half inch. So it, it shoots really, really well. Um, moving back, we got a... You're not going to be able to see it from there, but I got a, a Faxon uh, low profile gas block. Um, you really can't go wrong with those. I've got a, this is a Knight's Armament uh, URX 3.1, 13 and a half inch length um, that was given to me um, during my time at one of the manufacturers I worked for. Um, this one happens to be a blem. I, you're not going to see it here, but right here, there's a blemish. In the uh, in the finish, um, and I'm still waiting on my my uh, panel kit for it, um, so I'm not going to leave it slick. They have uh, grip panels and hand stop, which I'm going to use. 
Um, this isn't the ideal rail that I would use for a precision gun setup, but it's what I had, and it, it's very, very um, sturdy, and I really, really enjoy this rail, but I would much prefer to have this on like a 14.5 or a 16-inch carbine rather than a 20-inch rifle, um, which I'm going to move it on because we got another project we're working on, but I'm not going to go into detail on that here. Um, right now I've got a, this is going to be a stand-in, I'm trying to get a um, an atlas to put on here, uh, the PSR bipod is what I'm going to be using, but I've got, this is just a, uh, a 9 to 13 called well um, that I'm using right now because I've had that for a while just to like, to bench shoot with so I wouldn't have to use my, my rest. Um, and I've just got that in a Blackhawk uh, Picatinny adapter right here. Um, moving back to this big thing right here, this is a, the optic I chose to go with, um, there are really a lot of good op options out there, like you have your, your Sig Tango series, your Night Force NXS's, um, oh, I'm sorry, your, um, your, what are the, the SXT's or whatever, yeah. There's one that runs about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars, and I can't remember which series it is right off. Um, but you had you had those. You've got your your loopholes in that price range. Um, but I went with uh, this scope here, which is a Burris XTR2 five to twenty five by fifty. Um, the reason I chose this scope over some of the other series is number one, this is a god awful. Uh, Cerakote. It's like uh, some Desert Cryptic, but Optics Planet had it. Um, and they're just trying to get rid of these scopes, which the base scope is great. It's just this this Cerakote is ugly, but I'm looking for performance. I don't really care how it looks. So they had these. These scopes normally run about straight price anywhere from 13 to 1500 bucks, and they had it for 750 and I couldn't pass it up. Um, so I got that. It is a first focal plane scope. It is in the, the oh, what are they called? The, the clicks on this is mills, is not MOA, uh, which makes it a lot easier for ranging targets uh, within the scope instead of having to do it via range finder or um, trying to calculate mills, or no, I'm sorry, not mills, minutes, uh, shoulder to shoulder on a target, whereas I can use uh, mills in this scope, and it's actually got um, stadia about, I want to say they're about five mils out from center on either side. That's where you can put it on your target. So if you're using like an IPSC target or something like that, you can do shoulder to shoulder measurements, calculate your distance that way on an unknown, unknown distance shoot. Um, that's one of the things I really like about this. Um, the other thing is the first focal plane is good, which for those who are unfamiliar with that, um, you zoom out your reticle real time, you can't really use it, but as you, as you zoom in, um, your reticle starts to get magnified with the image. So you can overlay your reticle on your image. Um, and no matter what magnification level you're at, the mill gradients are going to be the same. So you can accurately hold over without having to dial your scope up. Um, and so that the price range of these are new. Um, without the deal that I found, it's about when you start getting into your, your good uh, first focal plane optics. Um, another feature I, I got from this is it's got a zero stop. What that means is, um, so let's say I set it, I zero it at 100 yards. So now I'm going to shoot out to, I don't know, 1,000 yards. So on this rifle, I'd be 9 mils. So I'll dial it up, 9 mils. Take my shot. Well, the next shot's at 100, so how do I do that? Well, with the zero stop, that lets me just turn all the way down, and I don't know if you can hear it. You can hear it just stop, and it is a dead stop. It's not soft. It's not, oh, well, I stopped, you know, a few mils behind it, and now i got to go back to wherever um, the zero is. This stops right at my 100 yard zero, which is great for a competition scope, and it's really, really hard to find a scope that has that below about $1,500. Um, and the other thing 
Another feature that I really like on the scope is it's got an adjustable parallax. Um, it goes from 50 all the way out to 100 to infinity. To infinity. Uh, and so far I found it to be pretty accurate as far as which, um, which number adjustment to put it at for the correct yardage. Um, and then it's also got a illuminated reticle, which I'm not going to, I don't use a whole lot um, because I don't shoot a whole lot in low light conditions with something like this. Um, but otherwise, it, so far it's turned out to be a really good scope. The glass is really clear. Um, not quite as, um, I don't want to say not quite as clear as something like a Vortex or a Night Force. It's just, it's noticeably darker. Um, but it's not like, not like that noticeable unless you have them side by side and you can look through them. Um, and I have that in a, or moving on from the scope down to my mount, I have a Burris uh, 34 millimeter um, signature QD pepper, um, which so far I've really liked the scope. It comes with um, some polymer inserts for each ring where you can have anywhere from zero MOA can't like I have in this now to 40 MOA can't, which is a bit excessive for a 556 because I'm never going to go above nine mils in elevation, so it's really absurd um, how much how much can't you can get into this. Um, but it locks up nice and tight. Um, it, so far, it's, I've removed it. Or I've shot a group, removed it, put it back on, shot another group. And it doesn't seem like it has any zero shift at all. Um, I don't really have to touch the sights once it's on there. Um, and it comes off real easy. It's just if I can get it off. Just two quick throw levers on this side and it comes off, which doesn't really make a difference on a gun like this, um, considering it's meant to be put on and left on. Because, as you can see, I don't have any other sighting system, I don't have any irons, I don't have an offset red dot. Um, the matches this is going to shoot in, you're not never going to use them. Um, and then, moving back from there, um, I've got a Arrow upper. I, want, I was going to use a BCM Mark II upper, which uh, it's up in this area on both sides. It's built up a little bit um, to make it a little bit stiffer, and it's also a... Uh, heat fit where you have to use a like a propane torch to heat up heat up the area right here so you can slide slide the barrel in. Um, it gives a real good firm lock up. Um, but I couldn't find one of those in stock anywhere, so I had to settle with this. Um, which I mean, for the groups that's shooting, it works really well, so I'm not complaining at all. Um, and it's not not bad quality for a hundred bucks for an upper. Um, so that was a good purchase. Um, going on from there, I've got it sitting on uh, one of the themed PSA lowers. This one happens to be a St. Mattis uh, lower where it's got you know, General Mattis where he's holding a grenade and a knife in one hand and he's got the halo. Um, and I've got on the lower, I've got a ambidextrous mag release. Um, I'm a big believer in ambidextrous features, and that just happens to be one of the first ambi parts I got to be able to put on here. Um, I need to make a modification to the lower so I can have an ambi bolt catch. Um, just haven't gotten there yet. Um, I'm still trying to decide which safety I'm going to put in it. Right now it's just a standard M6, or not M16, AR-15 two position safety. Um, we're not putting a giggle switch in this one even though we are an SOG, but um, I'm going to keep the standard um, A2 trigger guard because there's really no need to change it. it. They're mainly just there for looks or unless you're in a an Arctic climate or it gets really cold in the winter and you're wearing those big, thick, heavy winter gloves. Um, unless you're doing that, there's really no need to change this out. Like I usually wear gloves when I shoot. I've got a pair of those um, they're the mechanics. Uh, impact gloves um, and I, sh I shoot with those they are really comfortable um, and like I can fit my finger in there just fine uh, with the standard the standard uh, trigger guard um, the slower has a just a basic 
Diesley two stage trigger in it. Really good trigger. Um, I haven't really noticed the difference between like the SSA Enhanced, the SSA, and then any of the others. Uh, they all feel about the same to me. Um, the only difference really being is the trigger shape, and I've I'm just fine with the traditional uh, curved trigger like like that's in here. Um, I've got a standard A2 grip. Um, I'm still deciding on which which grip I want to use. Like I've narrowed it down to either the Luth AR chubby grip or the Ergo. Um, I don't remember the exact designation, but it's like it, it looks basically like a PSG one grip where it's really contoured and it's got the the palm swap, the adjustable palm rest down at the bottom. Um, I really like those, but um, I mean, I'm probably end up going to go with that one. I just haven't bought it yet. Um, then going back to the upper, I've, right now I've just got a Strike Industries um, charging handle with a, I don't know if you're going to be able to see from there, but it's got a, uh, uh, large or extended latch on it. Um, the reason being is that with a scope this size, um, the extended latch makes it easier to get in here and get on the, the charging handle. Uh, this is just a holdover until my Raptor comes in. Um, like I said, I'm trying to keep the whole thing ambi, so having an ambi charging handle would be a great, a great boon for this. Um, the bolt carrier that's in this is another one that I picked up when I picked up the barrel. Um, it's not the one I'm probably going to stick with. Um, I need to restake the gas key as the staking that came on it was pretty poor. Um, and I'm using just a mil spec bolt in it, um, which I'm going to end up swapping to the LMT enhanced 556 bolt. Um, I really like that design and it's proven to be a very, very good design. And I'm going to be using one of those in this. Um, moving back, this is a standard rifle length buffer system. Um, for 20 inch guns, I prefer that. It shoots a lot better than the carbine systems, um, from my experience. Um, I, pr I really prefer the rifle length setup overall over like a mid length or carbine setup. Uh, they just shoot a lot nicer for this kind of shooting. Um, and then on that buffer system, I have the Luth AR, I believe this is the MBA3 uh, buttstock. That's got an adjustable cheek piece and adjustable length pull. Uh, and I went with this over the Magpul PRS strictly due to weight. The PRS weighs in, I think it comes in right around two and a half pounds. And this one comes in at like 1.3. Um, this rifle's already, like as it sits, about 15 pounds. Um, so the PRS for me just was not was not worth the extra weight. Um, and this this one, it, everything locks up nice and firm. I haven't had any any of the the thumb screws walk out on me. Um, overall, I think it's a really nice stock, especially for the price because it also comes in half the price of the PRS. Um, and like I said, I really like it. I like the pull adjustment. While not ideal, works pretty well. Um, it also has, it's got the areas to accept a QD socket. I just, it doesn't come stock with it, which is something I don't like. Um, but I am going to be putting one in on the left hand side. And then the other thing that you can do with this, um, which the PRS does come stock with, this doesn't, is right under here, um, you can buy an optional add on kit to add a pick reel for a, um, a monopod, which I will also be doing. Um, and I'm going to be getting one of the AccuShot um, monopods for the, the end of this. Um, because, it, well, in PRS, you don't get a whole lot of uh, shooting positions where you can use a, both a bipod and a rear monopod. The stages that you do get them, um, it really helps to have it there. Now, a lot of guys like to run, you know, your game changer bags and things like that, which I'm going to be running one of those too. Um, but the difference is, is once you put down, put it down on the monopod and get it adjusted, you can just get off the gun, just make sure sights lined up, and then just use one hand to pull that trigger and let it free recoil. 
Um, that, that way you take all of the human error, or not all of it, but 90% of the human factor out of the shot to be able to make it. Um, and so, yeah, that's the list of um, upgrades. And then before I forget, the final thing I haven't mentioned is the sling. Now, granted, you don't really use a sling in PRS, but in my opinion, no rifle is complete until you have a sling on it. Um, I had a, originally I had a, just a bare bones Viking Tactics sling. Um, I really like that sling. However, this rifle is a little heavy for it and it starts really digging into your shoulder because it's, it's only an inch, like seven eighths to an inch wide. Um, and it's really thin, like, um, like, uh, like backpack strap material. It's about the best way I can describe it. I don't really know what the technical term for it is. Um, so I changed it up and I bought a, this is a Blue Force Gear Vickers padded sling. And this works really well. The only issue I have with it is it doesn't allow me to have enough, um, enough adjustment with the quick adjust to actually tighten it up as much as I'd like to tighten it up. And that's the, the only difference or the only downside to this particular sling over the Viking Tactics I had on it. But as far as this big, nice padded section right here, it cuts down on digging into your shoulder quite a bit. Um, but uh, that's about everything I've done with this thing so far. Um, it works really, really well. Um, I'm really happy with the build so far. Um, like I said, the only other things I got to change is the bolt and carrier, the charging handle, the monopod on the back, and the bipod, and then the brake when we get those in. Um, but otherwise, like I said, this thing shoots really well. Um, it is its only purpose, excuse me, it is for precision rifle, the, the precision gas gun matches. Um, I probably could take it to like some of the more um, local and club level um, SPR matches. It'd probably do really well in there, but this thing had one purpose in mind, and that was the the practical precision division for the quantified performance matches. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, please feel free to leave a uh, comment down in the comment section. Um, and don't forget to give us a like on the video if you like the content, and uh, subscribe to our channel for more like this. Anyways. Um, that's it for this episode, and uh, we will be releasing um, we'll be releasing long form podcasts every Friday afternoon uh, at five o'clock, and then other content like this um, throughout the week. So John will do his portion on Mondays. I'll do mine Wednesdays, and uh, yeah, we'll keep going right there, and we'll see you next time.